Hi all, today we are going to discuss about transformer with winding resistance and after that followed by equivalent circuit of a transformer and what will be the equivalent circuit referred to the primary and the secondary side and what will be the phasor diagram of a practical transformer. So everything we are going to discuss today. So till the last class we have removed one by one assumptions which we have taken for the case of ideal transformer. So we have removed the condition of magnetizing component of the current. After that we have considered the core loss component and in the last class we have considered the effect of the leakage flux. So only one assumption is remaining that is the resistance of the winding. So we know that the transformer winding is made up of the copper. So because always the copper conductor will have some resistance. So that resistance also will affect how much value of the power that is transferred from the primary to secondary side. Let us assume that resistance I am representing by R1. R1 indicates the resistance of the primary winding. Similarly, in the secondary winding, the resistance of the winding I can represent by R2 that represents the winding resistance of the secondary winding. Let us only consider the resistance first. Later on, we will consider all the parameters and go for exact equivalent circuit. So if you are applying the voltage V, V1, out of this voltage V1, because of the winding resistance, some voltage will be dropped in the resistance. Some voltage will be dropped across this resistance when the current I1 is passing through this. So remaining voltage will come across these two terminals. Similar is the case out of the EMF that is produced, some voltage will be dropped across this resistance. So this voltage is dropped and remaining voltage only will reach your terminal. So this is my voltage V2. So when the load is connected to the secondary side. So now the there will be a power loss because of this resistance. So the power loss because this will be dissipated in the form of heat or as the loss is happening in the copper because initially when the winding are initially when they are used the copper used to be used nowadays even though people are going for aluminium still the it is called as the copper losses only. So this total copper losses that occur due to the winding resistance will be in the primary side there is a current I1. So this will be I1 square into resistance of the primary winding and in the secondary winding the current is I2 there will be loss will be I2 square into R2. This indicates the total copper losses. So if you want to refer the resistance from the secondary to the primary side or primary to the secondary side the basic concern you have to remember is the total copper losses should remain same whether it is referred to the secondary side or to the primary side. Let us assume this I2 square into R2 I want to bring to the primary side then in that case that loss should be same as equal to I2 square into R2. So that thing you have to take care. So I can represent like this the copper losses before transfer this will be equal to copper losses after transfer. So before transfer, let us assume the secondary side, it is I2 square into R2. When that resistance is represented in the primary side instead of secondary side, let us assume that resistance I am representing by R2 dash because primary side, the current that will pass will be I1. So this will become I1 square into R2 dash or otherwise from this, I can tell that R2 dash will be equal to I2 by I1 whole square multiplied by R2. What is I2 by I1? Because I1 by I2 is equal to K voltage transformation ratio. So this can be represented by R2 divided by K square. So this is the resistance referred from secondary to the primary side. Let us see what will be the equivalent resistance in the primary side when it is referred to the secondary side. When this resistance is in the primary side, the copper losses will be I1 square multiplied by R1. When this is referred to the secondary side, it will become equal to secondary side current will be I2 square and that resistance referred to the secondary side let us represent as R1 dash. So from this I can calculate my R1 dash will be equal to I1 divided by I2 whole square divided multiplied by R1. This will be K square times of R1. That means primary resistance referred to secondary side will be multiplied by K square. When you are referring secondary resistance to the primary side, it will be divided by K square. Please remember that one. So now this total resistance referred to primary side. So when the resistance is complete resistance is referred to primary side, I am representing that by R01. This will be equal to R1 plus R2 referred to the primary side will be R2 dash. So this will become equal to R1 plus R2 divided by K square. Getting it? Similarly, the total resistance referred to the secondary side, this I am representing by R02 
this will be equal to R1 dash plus R2 that is K square times of R1 plus R2. This is the value. So, if you want to calculate the total copper losses, so the total copper losses will be I1 square R01, I can calculate like this because entire resistance is referred to primary side or this will be same as I2 square into R02. Let us try to prove how this is coming. So, this will be I1 square R01. So, this I can write as I1 square into R1 plus R2 by K square. Agree with me? So, we can, we can write I1 in terms of I2 because we know the ratio of I1 by I2 is equal to K. So, from this, I can write I1 is equal to K times of I2. So, this will become K square times of I2 square multiplied by R1 plus R2 by K square. So, this I can write as I2 square into K square times of R1 plus R2. So, this will be equal to I2 square into R02. So, agree with me? So, we can tell that the total copper losses in the primary side or refer to the secondary side is one and the same. So, generally in practice when you are calculating the numericals, sometimes they represent in per unit resistance or per unit primary resistance drop. So, how much voltage drop is there due to the resistance? So, this will be equal to the, what will be the primary voltage drop divided by primary induced voltage. So, we know the primary voltage drop is I1 is there and the resistance in the primary side is R1 divided by E1. Per unit primary resistance drop or due to the primary resistance is I1 into R1 divided by E1. So, similar way per unit secondary resistance drop. So, this will be equal to I2 into R2 that is a voltage drop due to secondary resistance divided by the base value or the secondary induced voltage I am taking as the base. So, similar way the per unit resistance drop or it is also called as per unit resistance refer to primary side. Refer to primary it means entire resistance is referred to primary. This will be I1 multiplied by R01 divided by E1. Getting it? So, this will be equal to you can check it this will be I2 R02 divided by E2. What I mean to tell the per unit resistance drop referred to primary or secondary side will be one and the same. So, I hope that basic what is the effect of the resistance is clear to you. Now, let us take the exact equivalent circuit of a transformer. So, if you are representing the transformer, so transformer can be represented like this. There is a voltage source V1 is applied. So, winding resistance I am representing R1. And leakage reactants we have seen in the last class will be represented as series branch element. These two are represented as series branch element because they depend on the load current. So, that is why they are represented in as a series component. So, now there is a core. So, the winding is made like this. So, in the core the flux is produced. So, core I am represented direct as it is later on we will bring it out. So, the flux is there. So, this flux will link with both primary and secondary. So, A1 is induced here. Similarly, in the secondary winding E2 is induced. So, out of this again there is a drop due to R2, there is a drop due to X2 and remaining value will reach your terminal voltage V2. Okay, This is my load impedance ZL. Getting it? So, this I can represent in the equivalent circuit or exact equivalent circuit of a transformer. I can represent in this form there is R1, X1, this is my voltage V1 and because of this the primary current I1 is passing. Now, in the core there are two things. One thing is the magnetizing component and the second one is the core loss component or iron loss component which I am representing by R0 and magnetizing component I am representing by X0. So, this magnetizing current I am representing by IMU and iron loss component of current I am representing by IW, some of these two will lead to the current under no load conditions I0. Getting it? So, there is a core that core I have removed the two lines, parallel lines are not drawn because core is already represented outside. Because as the voltage is changing, I cannot combine it or connect it directly. So, as effect of this, there will be I1 dash current that is passing. That will be transformed to the secondary side. So, E2 is induced in the secondary side. Again, secondary side there is a resistance R2 and X2 is there, the current I2 is passing and there will be a 
load impedance ZL and this is my voltage V2. So, this is the exact equivalent circuit of transformer. So, we can write the transformer that equations. So, equations I can write like this the value of V1, V1 will be equal to minus E1 plus I1 R1 plus J times of I1 X1. So, why minus E1? Because E1 is 180 degrees opposite to V. That is why we are writing minus E1. Y plus J I1 X1 I have already discussed in the last class. So, similar way I can represent the value of the E2. E2 will be V2 plus I2 R2 plus J times of I2 into X2. This is the value of the E2. So, this again we will discuss in the phasor diagram. Before that, let us see how to simplify this equivalent circuit while solving the numericals. So, all the components in the secondary side can be referred to the primary side. So, I am referring complete equivalent circuit to the primary side. So, primary side components are same. This is R1 X1. Voltage applied is V1. So, the primary current is equal to I1. So, the shunt branch element I am representing here. This is X0, R0. Current passing is I0. So, remaining current is passing here. This is I1 dash. So, because of this, the EMF is induced E1. So, this E1 will be equal to E2 referred to the primary side. Getting it? Now, secondary side, whatever the resistance, reactance and impedance are there, this I am referring to primary side. So, this I can call as R2 dash plus J times of X2 dash. Agree with me? So, this will be equal to when the resistance is referred to the primary side, I have to divide with K square. So, this will be R2 by K square plus J times of X2 by K square. So, similarly, this load impedance will be ZL dash that will be equal to ZL divided by K square. It is referred to the primary side. So, similar is the case that this will be terminal voltage will be referred to primary side. This will become V2 dash. V2 dash will be V2 divided by K that is referred to the primary side. This is called as equivalent circuit referred to primary side. So, now to make the analysis easy because I have already discussed before generally the value of the no load component of current I naught is only 4 to 8 percent of the full load current or the rated current I1. As the value of I naught is very less even if you shift this branch from here to the beginning it is not going to affect your result because if you shift this branch from here to this side the value of I1 because we are shifting this R1 X1 to the second side. So, it is decreased by 4 to 6 percent, but it is not going to affect your result so much. That is why we can go for approximate equivalent circuit. In the approximate equivalent circuit, the shunt branch element is shifted to your source side. So, it is shifted like that R0 X0. This is the value of the I0. So, this resistance is shifted to secondary side. So, this will be R1 X1 this is R2 dash, this is X2 dash and there is ZL dash. Everyone agree with me? So, this is my current I1, this is my current I1 dash. Previously, I1 is passing through R1 X1, now it become I1 dash and now I can combine these resistances together. So, this I can combine together as R01 plus J times of X01. Agree with me? So, this way I can do it and this value of I1 dash will be K times of I2 that will come. So, now because of this shifting these parameters what is going to affect? So, the things that are affect is the no load primary copper loss is neglected. Under no load condition the secondary is open circuit, ZL is open circuit. So, in this if you apply the open circuit when this is open circuit I1 dash is equal to 0. So, only component of current that is taken is I0. This I0 is not passing through R1 X1, but actually in practice R1 X1 comes first. So, there is a copper loss that is not counted here. This is the first observation. And second one, the value of the voltage that is applied because here it will be V1. Actually, the value of the voltage that is applied is equal to E1, but V1 is applied here because we know this V1 is greater than E1. So, as V1 is greater than E1, the value of the I0 I mu as well as I w that are calculated using this method are greater than the actual values. 
or we can tell that the value of the iron losses that are obtained using equivalent circuit are greater than the actual values but generally the difference is very less only 4 to 8 percent that's why most of the practical cases we go for approximate equivalent circuit only so next class we are going to solve some numericals so there i will explain you exact equivalent circuit approximate equivalent circuit and how the error is coming how much value of the error is coming so now when you draw this approximate equivalent circuit so from this i can calculate my value so r naught will be equal to voltage applied is v1 divided by iw Similarly, X0 will be equal to V1 divided by the magnetizing component of the current I mu that is passing through this, getting it. So, now this value of this IW can be obtained from I0, I0 cos phi0, I am going to show in phasor diagram. Similarly, this magnetizing component or I mu will be equal to I0 sin phi0 or I0 is the vector sum of IM and IW. Let us see the phasor diagram now. So, in order to represent the phasor diagram, so first one is let us take the flux phi. So, because of this flux phi, let us assume the EMF in the secondary side is secondary terminal voltage and representing the terminal voltage by V2. Let us assume the current passing through this, I am taking as I2, this is my secondary current and phi2 is the secondary power factor angle. So, now due to this I2, I2 R2 will be in phase with I2. So, I2 R2 I am drawing parallel to I2. That means these two are parallel to each other. This will be I2 R2. So, for this 90 degrees perpendicular, I have to draw J times of I2 X2. So, this gives my value of E2. Getting it, how to get the E2 is clear to you. Now, because of the secondary current, in order to compensate for this, the primary current will be there that I am representing as I1 dash. So, I1 dash will be there that is the primary current to compensate for the secondary current. So, I1 dash is there. How to calculate? We have already seen. And the value of the EMF induced in the primary side. So, that I can represent by the term as E1. Actually, it is a minus sign. Getting it? Let us assume the no load component of the current is I0. So, the sum of this I0 and I1 dash. So, this will give my value of I1. So, because of this I1 minus E1 plus there is a drop in the resistance. This will be I1 R1. And voltage drop in the reactance, I can represent it like this, J times of I1 X1. So, when you add this, you would get your supply voltage V1. Getting it? So, now the angle between V1 and I1, that is called as the primary power factor angle. So, this is the exact phasor diagram went for the case of lagging power factor load. Lagging power factor load means I2 is lagging behind the value of V2. So, same thing can be done for unity power factor as well as the leading power factor case also. So, I hope the concepts are clear up to now. So, next class we are going to take one numerical. In that numerical, I will describe the complete concepts what is taught till now. I will try to cover in a single numerical so that the concept will be completely clear to you. If you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.